everybody and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Avon Van Hassel and I'm a self-published author. If this is your first time here, most of the things I post are tips and tricks uh, for things to try in your writing or um, I'm still trying to find my feet on um, what like my primary content is going to be. It's usually, it's still mostly writing tips, but I do do a lot of other things like um, writing events. We write together every every Saturday morning at 8, my time, Pacific time. Um, I was trying out a little something about taking off my makeup and uh, talking about fairy tales. I did an episode where I shamed Napoleon. Uh, that sort of thing. Just kind of history slash writing things that are interesting to me. Um, but today I'm going to try an unboxing because I know people love unboxings and, you know, I thought it might be something a little fun to try and I thought I could take this as an opportunity to announce a new direction that my channel might be going toward in future. So. So a few days ago, my mother and I were talking about um, just YouTube in general. And for those of you who don't know, one of my very favorite things that is not new at all, but it's new to me because I'm always late to trends, is uh, the true crime slash beauty crossover YouTubers. And I just have so much fun with that because it's like a couple of my favorite things. I love true crime, always have. Kind of worrying to my family a little bit. And I love makeup. Um, it's not a genre that I can imagine myself. Can you guys hear that? My neighbor and his leaf blower is like... We'll just give it a minute. It's not a genre. It's not a genre that I can see myself um, expanding into, mostly because I'm not a makeup artist and also because I like watching videos and things about true crime, but I don't really have the time or energy to do all of that research myself with everything else that I have going on. So I'm kind of like happy to let them do it and, you know, like and subscribe and all that. Um, but it kind of, I was trying to explain my fascination with true crime to my mother and is that my cat screaming at me now? Cassie. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I'm gonna close this window while I'm up here. I need the fan. My God. Tireless will work. So I was trying to explain to my mother my fascination with true crime because 
my mom of course takes the stand of like this is a horrible thing that happened to a real person like why are you so interested in this and I was like I don't know but you know a lot of people are and there there's a whole psychology of why true crime is so popular and why women are far and away the largest demographic of people who enjoy true crime so it's really not that surprising to have the true crime beauty crossover it's actually kind of like I'm shocked that it took so long for it to happen. But anyway, I did a little research and it turns out that the area of your brain that is switched on by watching true crime shows is the same area that's switched on by watching cooking shows. And it's really funny to me because my mother loves cooking shows. Well, I do too. We both love cooking a lot and we watch cooking shows together because... Now, my mom has this superpower, and I hate her for it, where if she watches people cook, in her head she can taste what that food tastes like. And sometimes she actually, like, it's an appetite suppressant for her. And I'm so mad about it. Of all the things I could have inherited from her, I got her sense of direction. She could get lost in a paper bag. It's the worst. But I don't get, I, I'm a foodie, but I don't get that, that other little bit. So... I was thinking, I wonder if, and I'll, I'll post that article in the comments or in the description because it's an interesting read. I'm not sure I'm completely sold by their argument. I have my own theories, but I'm not a psychologist, <laughs> neurologist. Okay. I will post the, the link to the article because it was interesting, but it kind of got me thinking about this crossover or this connection between true crime and cooking shows and I actually can't find any, like, true crime cooking shows. Like, can you imagine how much fun that would be? Like, somebody's carving up a chicken and they're talking about, I don't know, some violent murder. I don't want to, like, actually mention it because I don't know if that would be in poor taste. It could be. I mean, who even knows anymore? The internet is such a gray area. But, nevertheless, still not on brand for me. So, I was thinking... Well, we got talking about this because part of this was her idea too. Um, and part of it is my friend Brianna's idea because she and I were talking about this neighbor. He's just revving his lawnmower. Can you guys hear it? I hope you can't hear it. Get it going, dude. Come on. And now it's decrescendoing. Just commit, man. Anyway, I'm going to try to get through this without murdering my neighbor because that's going to be on the news. <laughs> I'll be my own episode of True Crime. I was trying to film a video and he wouldn't leave his lawn alone and now I'm in prison. Anyway, um, so going back to the other one, my friend and I were talking about the idea of doing like a high tea sort of situation and talking about historical scandal which is an idea that I absolutely adore because that is completely in my wheelhouse. That is super something I could do. And then my mother and I were kind of expanding on that and expanding on the true crime slash cooking show idea and thinking like, would it be cool to, because I'm a big foodie and I love to cook and I do actually have I swear he's doing it on purpose because as soon as I stop talking, he goes away. But as soon as I start talking, he gets closer. So on my website, I do actually have a couple of recipes that I developed and posted. Not many because it's not the my main thing. And when I make up recipes, I tend to just kind of like throw things together and see how they work. It really drives my mother crazy that I don't measure or write down anything. But I am a foodie. I do love cooking and I love history. And I love all of that. So I was, we were all kind of thinking, wouldn't it be fun to sort of cook and talk about history or cook and tell a story, kind of like when I take my makeup off. And my mom really loves the idea of talking about hauntings and ghost stories and that sort of thing. And I kind of love the idea of the gray areas of history and society. So talking about things like cryptids or conspiracy theories or historical mysteries or whatever, that sort of fun thing. So then the idea just kind of evolved from there. And then I got it into my head. Why don't I cook historical dishes 
and tell a story. I guess whatever story pops into my head. I guess I, I have enough time here at the beginning of my channel to like nail down what my niche is, but I like a lot of things. And they're, my thing is I want to tell stories that inspire other people to tell stories. So fairy tales, for example, are stories that exist that inspire me to tell my own version of the stories. So conspiracy theories, you might think falls closer to true crime. I like to think of it as writing inspiration because where there is a gray area, there is potential for fiction, in my opinion. And that's, that's my whole thing is finding the gray areas of history and literature and folklore and everything and filling in the gaps. And that's how magic beans happened because I wanted to know more about the man who sold Jack the magic beans. So this idea kind of evolved and evolved and evolved until I finally went on Etsy and got myself a special, very fancy, retro vintage inspired apron. And that's the point of this whole video is getting to the apron. Now the store is called Quilted Apron Boutique and it is uh, run out of Templeton, California, which is pretty close to me. And the woman who owns the store is named, I want to say Jana, uh, J-A-N-A -A Queen, which is very cool. It's a very cool name. So I'm going to do a little bit of an unboxing. So the first thing was, um, I've already opened the actual packaging, the shipping material, because it was addressed to my, um, it was addressed to my secret identity. And then there was a little note inside in an envelope that was also addressed to my secret identity. So I'm not going to open that on camera. There's a little card and it says, dear Avon, I thank you for purchasing my apron. I hope you enjoy wearing it as much as I enjoyed creating it. That's funny. That's exactly what I say in my shop. May it brighten your day every time you tie it on. Sincerely, Jane. And then she's got a little, a little crown over her name. Isn't that the cutest? Very cute. And this is how it's packaged, which I'm just, I'm obsessed with that big flower. I'm probably going to wear it. Oh, it's actually a hair clip. Y'all. Well, it's a clip anyway. It's a lot little lobster clip. Okay. That's going. There it is. Oh yeah. That's yeah. Okay. Super cute. Don't judge the mess, you guys. There's a lot of mess. There. Okay. By the way, when I stand up, you'll be able to see this shirt and these leggings a lot better. The shirt is from the Society of Fat Mermaids, which I believe is owned by Mermaid Chez Monique. And the leggings are from Finfolk Productions owned by uh, Abby and uh, Bryn, Abby Roberts and Bryn Decker, because I'm a mermaid. Anyway, so this is how cute it is. I'm just absolutely enamored by this like peach and light blue combination. I just love, it's very, Kath, Kidston, is that her name? That kind of retro 50s vibe. Oh my gosh, and it comes with a little, <laughs> it comes with a little whisk, isn't that adorable? And the little um, business card for Quilted Apron Boutique. Life is short, tie one on. It's cute. Jana Queen, owner, apronista, and quilter, and then all of her socials and I will post that also in the description box All right. I'm going to tilt this back up okay so I had to switch camera angles because there is no place in my room where I could like set up my phone to get like a full body of this apron and it's not even that long an apron. I just have a super small room. 
So um, the angle is going to be a little weird, but do bear with me. It's not even about like, obviously, all of you know how to put on an apron. I just want you guys to be able to see how cute the whole thing is. So let me tilt this a bit because I'm not even that tall either. I'm super short. So backing up shouldn't be this much of an ordeal, but it just, it's been an ordeal. centered here. Put that in that waspy waist. Excuse me. I position everything where it goes. And there it is. I just love this color combination. It is so cute. I can't wait to cook in it so you guys can see it in action. So I just wanted to show you guys my new apron from Quilted Apron Boutique on Etsy. Um, if you guys are looking forward to the next couple of videos that I'm going to be filming in this cute little apron, um, do tell me in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe and hit the little bell so that you will get notifications for when I post my regular videos or my more weird niche things like cooking and story time and um i will see you guys around bye, -bye.